from the bottom of my heart to welcome each and every one of you here to the District of Family. We are really excited about who we have presenting this evening. Who is here for the first time? Wow, guys, look around the room again. Look at that. First time. Give yourself another huge round. How many of you are not only here for the first time, but have never done a deal yet? Those of you keep your hands up. How many of you that haven't done a deal yet are really, really worried about what it takes to be an investor? <coughs> right? How many of you have no idea where you're going to get the money from? You have no idea where you're going to get the deals from. You have no idea how to do the business, or maybe even don't even know what a wholesale is. If that is you, relax. Take a deep breath. Because we all got started somewhere. Okay? You're in the right place. That's what I can share with you. I am an active investor out in the field every single day. I'm a commercial multi-unit investor. I own property from Alabama, North Carolina, Georgia, Maryland, the Eastern Shore, Baltimore, mobile home communities, apartment buildings, so on and so forth. But I sat right there 17 years ago, and that's exactly how I got started. Single mom in a homeless shelter, got hit by a drunk driver, almost lost my life 18 years ago. Guys, I know what it's like. So relax. You're in the right place, and I'm really excited that you're here tonight. So. For those of you that I didn't get a chance to speak with, this is our yellow flyer. If you go to districtreia.com, that's our website. It's going to share with you everything that we have going on. We're a very unique and very different type of area. Why is that? I'm an investor. Andre's an investor. We believe that in order to be a successful investor, you have to invest in your education. You have to know what is going on in your market because every market is different. You have to understand what is going on in your business. The market in Baltimore is totally different than the market in Northern Virginia. Okay, two totally different markets, but yet it's still the local market. You have to build relationships in this business. It's all about who you know. It's about cultivating, nurturing, and building and networking with like-minded people. And you are in a room with powerful, highly energetic, like-minded investors, you're in the number one capital and the number one market in the country, the nation's capital of the United States of America. Yes, it is expensive here, but deals are being done day in and day out. We teach you, guide you, and coach you on residential, on multi-unit, on wholesaling, on how to flip, on how to find the properties, on how to find private money. Anything that you could possibly need as an investor in your business, our number one goal is to make sure that we are consistently providing that to you. Does that sound fair enough? Okay? Cutting edge. I want you to have the latest, greatest information and resources that we get access to so that you can further your career. Because this is a business, you can make it a hobby, but it is a business. And it's about creating financial independence and financial freedom in your lives. Because that's what everybody wants, correct? Yep. That's why we want to invest in real estate. I will tell you as an investor, there is no other greater... local speakers, coaches, and educators here locally. And what's awesome about Captain Pete is Captain Pete lives locally, but he's a national speaker. And that's what's so exciting. One of my very, very, very dearest friends, we have been friends, uh, Andre and I, and Captain Pete and a couple other guys were in a mastermind group for many, many years. And it's just so exciting to see all that he's done and all that he's doing. He's got a wealth of knowledge. To share with you. He's out in the field, out in the trenches every day. He's also a pilot for US Air, flies transatlantic. So to have him here tonight, you guys don't know how lucky you are. It was all we could do to get him out of the air and get him grounded <laughs> so that we could have you guys here. So really, really exciting. If you have any questions about membership, 
please let Andre or I know. There is no contract to sign. There is no fine print, guys. District Rhea is a family. We believe in serving you and supporting you. It's $47 a month, or our higher tier is $147 a month. You get to attend all of our meetings for free. With that being said, Scott, would you please come up for a moment? Guys, help me in welcoming Mr. Scott Blair from Mid-Atlantic IRA. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, 3D, smell it, touch it, feel it, all that. Great networking. I tell you what, I'm a huge believer in one very simple thing as it relates to any kind of business, that ultimately your net worth is going to be a, fun a function of your net worth, right? <laughs> so it's not only a matter of what you know, but it's who you know you can share what you know, if that helps. And there's no better way than when you're walking around and you're talking and you're chatting and you're shaking hands. Uh, you know, everybody kind of, as soon as the door opened, rushed in here tonight and got staked out your seat. Maybe you got to meet a few people around you, but I'll bet there are people here that you haven't met yet. Here's the good thing about when we go on property. There's no seats. <laughs> All right? So you got to be, you're going to meet lots of people, and uh, that makes it uh, an awful lot of fun. I am thrilled that uh, Tammy and Andre have uh, uh, joined in with us. This group, I think, represents D.C better than any other group. They are committed to all parts of D.C., as you can tell by the simple fact that we, as a group, don't meet in the same place week after week after week. We bring it to you, the investor. And Monday night is just another step towards really bringing it to you. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Anybody want to come? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you. Uh, it, uh, we don't have a cap really on the, on, on reservations. Uh, I am really looking for us to blow it out Monday night. Typically, I will tell you this: we run somewhere between 20 and 30 people since we have started the group. Now that we have opened the doors and are co-promoting, I'm really looking for us to uh, run yeah. into significant. When we, when we did Joe's property, where we've been, yeah. when it was total good down the studs, yeah. we had over 60 people there. I mean, it was standing room only. So you want to get there early. Yeah. This house has now been finished. It is remarkable. He blew up the top. He blew out the back. It, it is nothing like you've ever seen yeah. before, and it's something you want to aspire to do as, as an investor. And Joe is just And if I am not amazing. wrong about this, he got that piece of property from one as of our a wholesale members. deal from one of the right. members. From Louise Battle, group. one of our members wholesale this deal to Dr. Joe. So, uh, yep. Once again, we'll talk about that. Thank you all very, very much. If you didn't get one of these on your chair, uh, somebody stole it. Look at it. <laughs> Watch your pocket. Look. I've got more if you need them. Thanks. All right. Any questions before we get started? You guys ready to learn? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right. Without any further ado, um, because Captain Pete is so special to me, um, actually, I can't bring them up just yet. You know why? Because you got to do a drawing. Is there anybody that did not put their card in the spinner? Come on up. Pete, stand by. If you don't have a card and you want to rip up a tiny piece of paper, I'm open to that. Put your name on it. I got an extra card. Sitting right next to you, or who is in this room. So, lesson number one 
gather the business cards, but follow up. Okay? That's number one. So what are you going to get tonight? Every year, the girls of District 3 go to the beach for a week, because I believe you got to have fun, and I mm -hmm. believe you also got to celebrate at the same time. So we run a big nine-bedroom house once a year. Down in Bethany, we go down, and it's absolutely a lot of fun. While I was on the beach, I read The Woman at Millionaire. Anybody read this? This book changed my life. I hadn't read it, and I just read it. The One Minute Millionaire. It's actually two books. It's a book on the left, and then a book on the right. The book on the right is actually a story. You read that first, and you get all the way to the end, and then you flip, and you read this story. It's all about investing, but it's a story about someone's life, and it profoundly impacted my life so much that I bought five boxes. I have 50 of these sitting at home in my living room so that I can share them with you. Secondly, would anybody be interested in a one-hour one-on-one with me? Okay, that's my give to you tonight. One hour, one-on-one, -on -one, to talk about your business, to strategize, whatever it is that I can do to serve you as an investor, help to make a difference in your life in any way, shape, or form. I will not chase you. I will not follow up and hunt you down. You must contact me. We will set up a time to meet either via phone or meet in person, and I will make sure that I can do and will do everything that I can to impact your life and make a difference in your life. Anybody want this prize tonight? Yep, awesome. Plus you get the book. So uh, Captain Pete. Now, if everybody would please stand to your feet and give my special friend a huge District 3 warm welcome. Woo! Who just recognized what I did with Don? 
You see, one of the things that we forgot to do, and one of the things that I'm here to remind you to do tonight, and actually I'm here to give you permission again, is to drink. Yes. Oh, just eat <laughs> Is to dream. And, and we've forgotten how to do it. We used to be great at it as kids, weren't we? And now you take a look at, at those that are driving around the Beltway working their, their J-O-B, and they're 45 years old, and this is what they look like, right? You ever seen the expression on their face? <laughs> that or... <laughs> and I consider that dead. They just haven't been buried yet. And they go week after week, month after month, year after year, like a drone, until they <laughs> kick over at age 65 or maybe 70. And so we forgot how to dream. And I want to give you permission to dream again. And so promise me this. But when you leave me today, you'll go back home and dream. And I want you to write your dreams down. And I don't just want you to write, I want to travel. Because I'm not going to let you cheat yourself. I want you to put the color on it. I want you to put the texture. Just like I had the conversation with Don, what would you see? What would it smell like? And write that down. Here's why. When you hang out with me in this real estate business, or this business we call real estate, I'm going to ask you to make some behavior changes. I'm going to ask you to change the way you think. I'm going to ask you, most of you, to go from employee to business owner. And that's going to require me to activate something called your subconscious. Because you know what lives in your, sub in your subconscious? What? That's where your creativity lives. And that's what I've got to get switched on again. Because that's going to put the color, that's going to put the motivation, the real motivation in your life. And I want that for you. I'm going to cover with you tonight wholesaling. I noticed a lot of you had your hands up in the air. You're interested in, in, in getting started in real estate. A lot of you haven't made your first deal yet. I understand, I get that. What, 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 what happened? You just stepped on I stepped on it. that creativity in your subconscious. I want to switch it on. I want to help you make the jump from employee to business owner. And so I want that for you. I want that for you. All right. I'm here to cover with you wholesaling. This is the entry level for real estate investors. In this thing we call wholesaling, I'll show you and teach you how to make chunks of cash. Who likes that? Can you even ask me how they can jump? Don't you don't care, it doesn't matter. Well, I, that's actually the right answer. That's actually the right answer. And, and through this wholesaling, I'll show you and I'll teach you how to make chunks of cash, whether it's 2,500 who's interested, 5,000 who's interested, 7,500 who's interested, 15, 20 grand who's interested, 30 grand who's interested. Okay, that's what we're talking about. That's the order of magnitude of wholesaling chunks of cash. And we're not talking equity, we're talking real chunks that you can deposit in the bank and write a check off of. Whether it's 2500 or whether it's 30000 whatever your first deal wants to be, I really don't care. Because guess what your first deal does for you? It turns on the belief switch. Once again, activate your motivation, activate your creativity. It makes you go, i got to do this again. We'll be able to stop that. So tonight we're going to talk about wholesale. We're going to talk about flipping houses. We're going to talk about flipping contracts. How many of you are afraid of real estate? Nobody? You lie. <laughs> yeah, I do. How many of you don't have enough cash to get involved in real estate? Just think of thinking. What I'm going to 
share with you tonight, and again, this goes back to wholesale, is that you don't need a lot of cash to do this. You don't need to take bank loans out to wholesale. And it's just a matter of finding the right deal and putting it together with the right buyer and then taking a little piece of the action on the way and getting really well paid for it. What I'm going to teach you tonight in this entry level thing we call wholesaling is the basics. It actually winds up being the foundation of real estate investing. That's why Andre and Tammy asked me to come and spend time with you tonight. Because there are some aspects of this as business owners that we need to kind of understand. We need to know about marketing. We need to know what that means. We need to know how to apply it. We need to know how to get people motivated to want to call us up. That's one thing. We need to know how to do another kind of marketing. We need to know how to market to find people that want our deals. We need to know about the paperwork, don't we? What kind of paperwork to fill out? And by the way, I'm going to rock your world tonight because I'm going to teach you about the kind of paperwork that not a lot of people know much about. And my attorney up in Baltimore calls it pure genius. And then I'm going to teach you how to create that feeding frenzy so that when you have a deal, you'll know it's sold before you ever put it in the country. What does that mean to you as a new investor? <laughs> it means get paid. It means get paid fast. So I'm going to cover those principles with you tonight. That's the foundation of real estate investing. No matter what level you want to go to, whether you want to focus on wholesaling on steroids, and by the way, that's what I'm known for in this town, is running the bus tours where I've sold as many as eight deals, wholesale deals in a single day. You do the math. <laughs> Tammy was with me. She saw me do it. Three Trailways buses with 144 investors going house to house that I had under contract and wholesaled off for a margin. So what are the five easy steps for wholesaling for quick cash? Bang, number one, build your buyer's list. The folks who teach you wholesaling all around the country, some of the big names, the Purple Book Guy, and some of the other ones you hear about, they really don't know about this. They teach backwards. See, how many of you had a deal under contract and then nobody wanted it, it fizzled out? Find me again. I don't. I don't. Uh, you see, I call it like playing tag. It really doesn't do you much good if you've got a house under contract, you've got a deal under contract, and you don't have buyers waiting the wings that are ready, able, and willing to buy that deal. And so it all starts with the buyer's list. See, what I'm teaching you tonight, folks, is not hard. It's just a little bit different from what many of you have already been taught and told. It's a little bit different. Okay, so start by building the buyer's list. Number two, track motivated sellers. This is the this is this is the heart of the marketing. In marketing, we have a term we use called USP. You know what that stands for? Any, any marketing geniuses in the room tonight? Unique selling proposition. Unique selling proposition. Thank you. That's exactly <laughs> it. What is that? A unique selling proposition is this. It's a message that's so compelling it causes somebody to want to pick up the phone and call you to interact with you with whatever you're buying or selling. It's called the USP. In our business, our USP is what? We buy houses. We buy houses. Cash. We buy houses fast. We take over payments. Okay? So whatever the USP is, it's, it's actually pretty narrow for us. Okay? You don't have to reinvent it. Use what works. We buy houses. We buy houses fast. We buy houses cash. We buy houses. <coughs> sell your home in seven days. Okay? So that is called a, a unique selling proposition. I'm going to cover with you tonight some of my favorite methods of attracting motivated sellers. 
negotiate the deal. Negotiate the deal. That's just a fancy way of saying what to say and how to say it. You know what's really interesting? When a seller calls you who's really motivated, it almost doesn't matter what you say. All they want to know is if you can really buy their house. Once they figure that you can, they're blowing your phone up. How quick can you close? How quick can you come see the house? Who is my girl? Just me. I'm going to take a break just for a second. Is that okay? Sure. One of the things that you're going to learn about me, I'm an energy guy. And the more energy I feel from you, the more energy I'm going to give you tonight. You know what that means to you? Number one, you're going to learn more. But number two, I, I don't know about a thousand dollars worth of stuff I'm going to give away <laughs> when I feel the love. <laughs> labor deals for the airlines. I did that for six years. I've been toe-to-toe -to -toe with Warren Buffett personally. You ever saw that movie, Wall Street? I did that for two years. Where every week I was in New York, up at the investment banker's office and the lawyer's offices, negotiating an airline restructuring on behalf of the pilots. And so you get the benefit of my policies, my procedures, and my checklists. Because you know we're checklists driven as pilots. And you get the benefit of that applied to real estate. And so that's what I put together for you. And that's why that CD is so powerful for you. Because what I said and how I said it is not by accident. It's with specific intent. All right, negotiate the deal. Prepare the paperwork. What does that mean? It's a fancy way to say, lock it up, put it under contract. There's lots of different ways that you can put properties under contract. There's the traditional way where you use the board realtor's contract. It's like, uh, how many pages is it? 34 before you're done? 36? So you can do that. Whose interest does the realtor's contract contract protect? The brokers. That's what all that gobbledygook is all about in there. And it's confusing. And your, your sellers really don't know what they're signing. And it makes it difficult for us to deal with as investors and as wholesalers. We can. We can deal with it, but it just makes it just a, incrementally just a little more difficult. <coughs> you can also use a simple contract. Now, my simple contract that I use with most sellers is three pages. It's plain English, and it's got everything on it that needs to be on there. As a matter of fact, I 
that it for you, but all my paperwork. So are you dealing with for sale by owner? Or on the sale property? Trust me. Do you trust me? Listen, I'm going to fill you overwhelming. I'll have every one of your questions answered before you ask me. Just trust me. Just trust me. And so there's my simple three-page contract. And then there's the secret sauce, there's the magic, and that's options. I'm going to talk to you about options tonight and fill you in a little bit, give you a taste of what it's about. How much money do you need to put a house under contract? Where's my realtors over here? How much? Five thousand? Thousand? Anybody? Thousand? Five hundred? No. How much? Two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> How's ten dollars down? How's one dollar down? Is that possible? Come on, come, come on. Who says really? Say really? No, for real. Yeah. As a matter of fact, remember I was telling you about those bus tours I was doing? I sold eight in a single day to hungry buyers. Most of those houses I had a contract with an option. And an option gives me the right, but not the obligation to buy the house. And most of them I had under option. When I talk to a group like this, I tell them what it's good. I tell them $10. You forgive me? Because <laughs> I found nobody believes the truth. It's a $1. Most of them I had under contract for $1. The truth of the matter is they never even wanted a dollar. They just wanted the house gone. And they knew that I could do that. I could do that. House. So we'll talk about options tonight. And we'll talk about contracts a little bit tonight. How to prepare the paperwork. And then how to create the feeding frenzy. For those of you that have had deals that have fizzled out on you, how frustrating. When you do your marketing and you do the negotiations and you get the paperwork done, and now you're like, okay, I'm ready to get paid. And nobody's interested. Frustrating. Solved tonight. Okay? Never again will that happen to any of you in the room because you're hanging out with me and learning how to do it the right way. And the right way is take advantage of their greed glands, please. <laughs> take advantage of their greed glands. If I took a hundred dollar bill and dropped it over here and said whoever wants it can have it, how long would it stay on the floor? It was not very long. Would there be a frenzy of a few people trying to go up and get that hundred dollar bill? <coughs> what if it was a thousand? <laughs> what if it was twenty thousand? I'd be run over, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm really I'm not kidding now. I'm really not kidding. If I dropped fifty thousand in a bucket right here in front of you and said, hey, who wants it? Who of you are going to run me over to get it? Oh, <laughs> All of you? <laughs> okay, that's what I'm talking about. Because you know the money's in the can, right? The biggest mistake wholesalers make is when they present their deals to their buyers, they don't prove there's a bucket of money in the can. Oh, light bulbs are going off all over the room right now. You see, when they know the $50,000 is there, they're going to race to get it because they know if they don't get it, just like you in the room, if they don't get it, somebody else is going to get it, like profit. And we create the feeding frenzy by proving the money is there. And when we do that, watch out. Your phone will light up. How quickly can I get in the house? Why did Tammy and Andre invite me to be here? Yes, we're good friends. We know each other a long time. They wouldn't waste your time just to meet one of their friends. The reason they invited me to get here and be here and spend some time with you is because I'm one of the biggest wholesalers in Washington, D.C., in Washington, Baltimore. I focus on the 95 corridor from Northern Virginia all the way to Baltimore. See, I've already shared with you I run the bus tours. I've had 
as many as three trailways buses full of investors, cash buyers wanting my deals. I actually wholesale and rehab today. Yes, I rehab right now as we speak. I've got a coaching program. I teach people how to rehab houses. I'm an author. I've written books. I've written the gold course you see here in front of me. I wrote that. It took me a year of my life to write and create the DVDs that are there just so that you would know how to do this the right way and, and, and get regular wholesale payday. I want that to switch turned on. I'm creating wholesalers all over the country, and I'm thrilled to do it. All right. And then I'm an expert in the media. I've been on Lou Dobbs Money Line. I've been written up in the Washington Post. I've been on talk radio talking real estate deals. And as Tammy shared with you, yes, I'm a national speaker. I'm in demand. I get asked to speak all over the country. I'm very selective where I go. And I only pick the places where I know that the group is being properly led, just as you are with Tammy and Andre, because they care about you. And I only work with folks that are real. And so when they say, you're lucky to have me here, it's a little self-serving for me to say it, but I'm just saying it. Because <laughs> I turn down more than I go to. So that's why they invited me to be here with you. I've got a lot to share. So get your pens ready. All right. Life wasn't always so good for me. Tammy told you I'm an airline pilot. I've done that for a long time. It's what I wanted to do since I was three years old. And after 9-11, things weren't so good if you were a pilot in this country. Did you know that? The airlines all went bankrupt. The one that I went bankrupt not once but twice. And you know the worst part? Worse than taking the $40,000 pay cut, worse than losing the pension. You know what the worst part was? The worst part was not knowing from one day to the next when I went to the airport whether or not the doors were going to be Because I had a kid. I had a house. I had kids. They were at school. I had a house payment and car payments. That was the worst part. And so I'd be awake at night, couldn't sleep, my talk to Who comes off of problem sheets? <laughs> <laughs> I bought his book for two hundred fifty dollars. I read it cover to cover. I knew how everything was already in there until I got to the back of the chapter and it's talked about the Rio Club, just like this one. I never heard of that. Before. I never knew about these clubs. And so I looked it up online and, and came, just like all of you guys are, and had done tonight. And, uh, and then I started getting education. I started learning. I started hanging out with other people who wanted to do this. And then my belief level, my belief switch got to turn on. Back in these dark days, I got a call from a reporter at the Washington Post. He said, hey, since I was told you're one of the guys I should talk to, how's it going for the pilots? What do you, how are you guys coping with the pay cuts and job uncertainty and everything? I said, oh, I don't pay much attention to it. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I flip houses. And so I don't really care too much what the airline does. I'm not tied to them anymore. He goes, really? He says, that's interesting. You talked to me for about an hour and a half. He says, can I send a photographer out? And I said, sure. So that's a picture of me and my wife, Sally. It's, we're in our costumes. <laughs> and he asked us to wear our costumes. That's in one of our rehab houses. <laughs> and uh, so the post came in and did a story on us. And so, even through the bankruptcies, I'm still living my dreams. I'm still creating memories for myself, for my family, for my loved ones, for my friends. Isn't that what life really is about? Yeah. Is the memories that we create? Yeah. It's not about one more day at work. It's not about one more meal. It's about those memories. And it's the ability to create those memories because the time and money are no longer an object have lots of choices now, don't you? And so that's what it's all about. These are the things I like to do. These are real pictures of me hanging out through the stuff I like. I play golf at exotic destinations. That's out at Cheyenne Mountain Country Club in Colorado Springs. I love to sail. That's me and my wife, Sally. See the boat in the background? That's the boat I chartered. Just me and her tooling around the Virgin Islands for 10 days. Every day we'd throw the anchor out at New Island. And we'd snorkel, we'd cook on the boat, we'd wake up in the morning, 
this is the best part. With that Caribbean breeze, drinking my fresh brewed coffee. You know what kind of coffee I drank down here? Blue Mountain. Alto Grande. Anybody know what that is? That's the coffee that comes from Puerto Rico that the Pope drinks. That's the bag that's called here. These are the sunsets from the back of my sailboat down in the Virgin Islands. These are my buddies. I ski with them in Colorado. And we go ski in the trees out, out, out in Brackenbridge and Keystone. And so that's the stuff I like to do. And I hang out with my friends. We, have, we go to expensive dinners and expensive parties and stuff. But it's not about me, is it? No. No. It's about you and activating your belief that you can do it. Who knows they can do it? Right? Who says, I'm not taking any prisoners? <laughs> no. Who says, I'm going to do whatever it takes to do it? Yeah, exactly. Good. Well, I'm hanging with the right folks. <laughs> now what I want you to remember, I want you to start writing your dreams down. Write yours down tonight. And it may not be things. It may be people. I mean, I, I am so blessed with the things I get to do. You guys ever heard of Frank McKinney? He's the father of the Robin Hood. You heard of him? McKinney? Yeah, he takes from the rich and gives to the poor. He's, he's a rehabber down in South Florida on the beach. And uh, his, his current house, I think it's the one he's renovating right now to sell. And we're talking on spec. You know what I'm mm -hmm. Frank McKinney? Mm -hmm. I was down there with him when he was breaking ground on it. It was going to be $135 million is what the offering price was going to be for a spec house. I was down in his house talking to him. And he says, Pete, he says, I don't need the money anymore. He says, I've made all the money that Nielsen, his wife, and I will ever, will ever need. He says, so for me now, it's all about giving it away. And he built a village for a thousand homeless in Haiti and gave them the houses. Gave them the houses. And by the way, it was the latest family got to be, not the And the church elders decided what families got the houses. So I was privileged. I got to actually supply two of those houses when he did it. So what are your dreams? Fill it in tonight, will you? Don't do it for me, do it for you. Write it down. Talk to your loved ones about it. And get to buy in so that it activates your creativity. Alright, so what is wholesale? Let's get into the meat of it tonight. By the way, do you guys mind if I relax? Can I roll up my sleeves? Can I take my tie off? Sure. Because I'm getting hot and I got a feeling with this group I'm going to get a lot hotter. <laughs> what is wholesale? Help me out. What's a, what is wholesale? Okay. Can I paraphrase that? Finding a bargain and selling it to a bargain hunter for a profit. Who are my wholesalers in the room right now? Oh, I've got lots of them. That's great. What is your name? Shreve. Shreve. What's a bargain? That's because Amy's wondering right now. Okay, that's easy. So what's a bargain? What's a bargain? You can get it at the low market value. The low market value? Minus the repairs. Minus the cost of repairs? All right. Minus the cost of repairs. All right, so you're talking about a modified Mayo formula. All right, for those of you in the room who don't know this term, it's called Mayo, write this down. Mayo stands for maximum allowable offer. I'll give you the formula. Don't worry that you don't know what it means. I'll explain. Mayo stands for maximum allowable offer. That's the most you can pay for a house. So MAO equals ARV times 0.65 Minus repairs, minus wholesale profit. Only for you. Write this down. MAO equals ARV times 0.65 minus repairs, minus wholesale profit. That formula is the golden rule that rehabbers use 
to determine whether or not the economics of a given deal makes sense. See, it builds in a profit component for them so they know what their minimum profit's going to be on that house before they buy it. If it falls outside that Mayo formula, they're not interested. It's too expensive. Who are my rehabbers in the room? Several. Rehabbers, are you on any wholesalers mailing lists? <laughs> Sherry, let them see your face. Sherry goes, yeah, I'm on some mailing lists, and they're pretty gruesome. Yeah. Here's what the rehabbers in the room know. Your competitors <coughs> don't get it. Your competitors don't understand the formula that they need to know whether or not a deal is going to yield the profit that they need or not. They don't understand the formula. And even if they know the formula exists, they botch it all up. They overstate the value, they understate the cost of the repairs. What it means is they're trying to sell a dog. Whether they know it or not, they're trying to sell a dog. Dave, that doesn't fly, does it? No. No. It doesn't fly in Washington, D.C., and it doesn't fly in Paducah, Kansas. And so that's why, with you guys paying careful attention tonight, you will separate yourselves. When you apply what you learned tonight, you'll separate yourselves from 99% of your competitors. The folks in the room that are real rehabbers, if you deliver them the deals where they know that they're going to get the bucket of money, where they know the profit is real, you can become their full-time marketing department and they'll buy from you whatever you bring. Okay, I want to I've been doing this for 0.75 and in July I made 100 offers without accepting of any of them. So I'm supposed to lower even more? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yes. Because, because the worst thing that can happen to you is you get that under contract, and then you're running around trying to you try to run around and tag it to somebody who's not going to buy it. Maybe a beginner will buy it, and they buy from you once and then lose their tail. That'd be the end of it. Okay, forget about it. Look, I made a hundred offers, and I didn't get any accepted, and I off, and I even overpaid. So what? So I make a thousand? No. I keep making them? No. No. You put your net in a different pond. You're competing with folks you can't compete with. You're competing on the MLS. You're trying to get REO deals. And you're competing with the Wall Street hedge funds who don't understand value. And are willing to overpay. If you want to compete with them, good luck. Because the rehabbers in this room are not interested. You can do it. I no, I just no. saved them. I I just, that first making one of the <laughs> offers and getting rejected. I just saved them. Can I, can I make it easy for you? I hope so. Stop making REO offers today. Stop today. Okay? Push your net in a different pond. Go where they're not. Make your offers directly to the homeowners. Go after the short sales. Keep at it. Put your offers there. Go after the short sales. Use direct mail. I'm going to teach you tonight how to do it. I'm going to teach you tonight how to do it. What I'm saying is, the height of frustration is to do something that's not working and keep doing it. So I'm not going to let you do that from this moment forward. So I'm glad you shared it with the group. Because now they're going to know how important it is to learn the message tonight on marketing. All right, so what is wholesaling? Simply finding a bargain and selling it to a bargain hunter for a profit. And it's a math issue, right? Did you guys get the math? MAO stands for maximum allowable offer. I want you to double line, double underline the letter M. That stands for maximum. Times 0.6, MAO equals ARV. ARV stands for after repair value. 
that means what's it going to be worth once it's fixed up and dropped in gorgeous? Then you subtract the cost of repairs, and then you subtract your wholesale profit target. Whether it's five grand, ten grand, fifteen grand, whatever, you build it into your offer price. And that's the most you can pay. So if you get a deal in a contract that needs mayo wholesalers, is that a bargain? Yeah, absolutely. Anthony says it's a bargain. Who agrees with Anthony? You agree? agree. Who else agrees with Anthony? You ladies agree? Anybody else agree with Anthony? Alex, you agree with Anthony? Kind of? A little bit? <laughs> okay. Let's talk to our rehab. Let's talk to our rehabbers in the room. Pamela, come up here and talk to me. Come and go share some, come and go share some knowledge. You guys want the inside track? Yes. Come on, I'm going to help you with it. Pamela, you're a rehabber, aren't you? Yes. Pamela, I got this house. It's so cheap. You know what it's really cheap. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Look, here's the point. Is it could be as cheap as a thousand dollars. But if you can't sell it once it's been renovated, what good is it? In some neighborhoods you won't operate it? Maybe? Maybe not? Okay. You operate in the war zones? Oh. <laughs> you operate under high tension lights? No, I don't. You operating, uh, you operating with toxic mold? Yeah, I am not. Yeah. Oh. So no matter what the numbers are, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bargain. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. 